A significant winter storm could be possible for the United States after Thanksgiving, leading us right into December. Now, you may be asking, what is causing this? Where might it impact, and how much snowfall could we see from this type of winter storm? All of those questions are going to be answered for you later in our forecast. Welcome back, everyone. I certainly hope you all have had a wonderful Friday. Today is Friday, November 21st, 2025. If you are new to our channel, we would be delighted if you would subscribe. So let's get right into the forecast, and this is quite an important development. We are already seeing a warming of the stratosphere taking place, and this is expected to bring one of two or three waves of cold air, and this is truly cold Arctic air down into the lower 48 states. As we head into the month of December, and looking high up in the stratosphere, we anticipate a more significant event to occur as we get toward next weekend after Thanksgiving. This is a notable event, the likes of which we have not seen since 2021. It could bring a very cold outbreak to the lower 48 as we move into the middle of December. And this could potentially lead to one of the coldest Decembers that we have seen across the northern United States in up to five years. So we will be keeping a very close watch on this for you, but let's look at the short-term forecast for this evening. We are observing light winds all across the eastern United States. And what light winds often do is create a perfect environment for some low, dense fog to form as we go through the evening and overnight hours this Friday. So, if you happen to have plans across the eastern United States this Friday evening and into the overnight hours after midnight, please be sure to take it slow out there on the roadways, especially in dense fog. Please, use your headlights and leave plenty of distance between you and the car ahead of you so you know where you are going as you start your Saturday morning. Otherwise, looking at the bigger picture of things, we have a trough of low pressure across the eastern parts of Canada and a ridge of high pressure extending from the southern Canadian prairies all the way down through the southeastern United States, which is bringing us our warmer temperatures and that rather stagnant air. That is what has been causing a lot of the dense fog over the past couple of nights. And then, here is our large storm system off the coast of California, and this storm has become cut off from the main flow of the jet stream. So, as we head through the weekend, it is only going to meander slowly farther to the east, eventually making its way into the central and southern plains sometime early on Monday morning. Now, when we look at the moisture source, it is coming straight out of the East Pacific. So, Southern California is seeing some rain showers this evening, and it is the same situation over here in Western Arizona. We also have some unsettled weather across the Ohio Valley, that is why I do believe we will be seeing some dense fog once again tonight. So for those under dense fog advisories, you have that low level moisture, potentially from the recent rainfall or just that general drizzle out there, and that is gonna create some foggy conditions in the east this evening. So please take it slow on the roadways. As we go into the weekend, I think we are going to see a lot of activity across the Southwest, including Arizona, New Mexico, and getting into West Texas. We expect low cloud cover and some rain shower activity. We cannot even rule out some snow in the mountainous areas of northern New Mexico, crossing over into southern Colorado on Sunday morning. Then, moving through Sunday night, unfortunately, it looks like another heavy rain setup for North Texas on top of already saturated soil. If you recall from yesterday, we had flash flood emergencies across Texas, including the Menard, Texas area, which saw up to a foot of rain. We could be seeing more rainfall measured in inches begin to develop there in North Texas, including Menard, Texas, as we go into Sunday night. This will be heavy rainfall again, potentially upwards of five to six inches between now and Monday morning. And this does include North Central Texas again, including not only Menard, Texas, but also Dallas, Fort Worth, Sherman, Denton, and all the way over to Texarkana. And that is the reason why the Weather Prediction Center has gone ahead and issued a slight risk of flash flooding across north central Texas, including the Red River Valley up into southeastern Oklahoma, lasting from Sunday into Monday. Then, from Monday into Tuesday, that risk shifts a little farther east toward the Mississippi River, including big cities like Memphis, Little Rock, and Texarkana. So we will be keeping a close eye on that for you as we head into the end of the weekend and early next week. As far as snowfall is concerned, folks, we are not really seeing a great deal of it here if you are a snow lover. This is not the weather forecast for you, at least in the short term, because there is a lot of warmer air in place. The main snow track will be up here in Canada. Otherwise, you have to go to the mountains out west to see a lot of that snowfall. The Great Lakes snow machine is shut off for the time being, and here are our temperatures. As we head into the weekend, you can see a lot of orange and red on the map, and that means we will have above normal temperatures. That is simply not going to get the job done for snowfall, at least on a widespread scale, into the lower 48. But my, how our fortunes are really going to change as 
we go into Thanksgiving week, and it is a process. Notice the blocking high pressure up here toward the Bering Strait, just to the north and west of Alaska? That is going to dislodge some colder air and a trough across southern Canada and into the northern tier of the United States. We have a bit of ridging in the southwest, near the Gulf Coast and southeast as well, which will keep us a little more mild farther to the south. However, what this pattern will be establishing is a very active storm track. This means a large-scale winter storm may start to form as we head into late November, right after Thanksgiving, across the heartland of our country. We will be paying special attention to the areas along the Mississippi Valley as there is potential for well above average precipitation. So, let us take a closer look at that storm system now. Here is the first storm. It does not have a lot of cold air to work with, except for far to the north. Especially in the Dakotas, we could have some wraparound snow as we go from Monday into Tuesday. Some snow is also possible across the border there into Saskatchewan and southern Manitoba. Some of this could be blowing and drifting, so you might want to take it slow on the roadways early next week. Meanwhile, rainfall and potentially some more isolated severe weather will be possible along and south of the Ohio River. North of the Ohio River, into the Midwest, Great Lakes, and Ohio Valley, we are likely just seeing colder rains as we go into early next week, from Monday through Wednesday. That system departs, and then we have another system developing. This one is more interesting. This one could be a potentially long-duration snow and ice event across the heartland of the country, especially up here into the northern plains, parts of the central plains, and into the upper Midwest and Great Lakes, which could reactivate the lake effect snow. Then farther south, yes, more flooding rains will be possible once again from the Ozarks all the way down into Texas and along the Gulf Coast. Now, we are looking at the potential for a winter storm between November 29th and December 4th of 2025. In the blue, that is where a snowstorm will be possible. This forecast may be adjusted in the coming days, so please stay tuned for updates. And again, this is a good reason why you should follow me on Facebook, because graphics like this one will be posted frequently throughout the seasons, including winter, spring, summer, and fall. We will be putting awesome graphics together for you all year long. An ice storm is possible there in the pink, so we will be watching that from the southern and central Rockies all the way to the Ohio Valley. Again, this could be tweaked in the coming days, but this is where we could be seeing a snowstorm and an ice storm as a possibility between November 29th and December 4th of 2025. So, we are not going to get into the specifics just yet, because the signal is not strong enough to look at any snow totals or anything of that nature, it is still well over a week away. But what we can look at are our temperature trends. As we start next week, we are going to be looking at some warmer than normal temperatures out ahead of that system. So, with that first system, that is why we are seeing a lot of rainfall across the United States. It is simply an extension of the warmer air that we are seeing this weekend and into early next week. Behind that first system, it is going to be laying the foundation for some colder air, and I do feel that after Thanksgiving, things will start to get quite cold behind our big system that we have developing here, whether it snows in Oklahoma or it snows in the Dakotas. That remains to be seen. But what is likely is that behind that system, our first batch of Arctic air will begin to move in, and that is because of the stratospheric warming we are seeing right now. That colder air is going to be moving down, much like a dam breaking across Canada and into the United States after Thanksgiving. And looking here at the long range into December, the even stronger, major, sudden stratospheric warming event is taking place. We have not seen an event of this magnitude since 2021, about four to five years ago. And this one could be more significant. This one could also be like a dam breaking, only even stronger. You can think of it as a tsunami of cold air. It is going to be pushing a great deal of that colder air southward. Once that dam breaks and the tsunami of cold air starts coming, it is not going to stop. Think of the cold air in that way. As we go into the second week of December, that is what we are going to be seeing, a lot of that colder air. And this is not just Arctic air, folks. This is Siberian air, which is some of the coldest air on the entire planet. So that is what we are going to be keeping a very close eye on, and then as we go into the third week of December, I think we will see an extension of that cold, although the temperatures will begin to moderate a bit. And then we see a big spike. Usually, after a major sudden stratospheric warming event, you see that significant spike in temperatures. So you see it get very, very cold all of a sudden, and then it gets quite warm right after that. We could then see a significant return to colder temperatures, and I do believe that is a possibility for Christmas or perhaps even New Year's. We will need to keep a close watch on that for your holiday plans. Overall, however, the snow will be quite active as we move into December. 
It certainly appears to be a snowy month ahead, especially for our friends out west in the mountains. This pattern will particularly affect southern Canada and the northern tier of the United States. We anticipate this snow will arrive in various forms, such as clipper systems, large winter storms, and of course, lake effect snowfall. It is shaping up to be a very active December if you are a fan of cold and snowy weather in the north. Now, we cannot entirely rule out some snow for the southern states. I do not believe we are going to see a major winter storm along the Gulf Coast this December as we did last winter. However, we could very well see some snowflakes farther south, in places like Dallas, Texas, over toward Memphis and Nashville, and even in the Carolinas around Raleigh. We cannot rule out some snowflakes as we approach the Christmas holiday. However, the vast majority of the accumulating snow will likely stay north of the Ohio River as we go through the holiday season. We will be monitoring the situation very carefully as we receive more information. Thank you all for watching. That is the latest weather update with the new information I have for you this evening. If you enjoy these videos and you appreciate that they are straightforward and informative, I would invite you to subscribe to the YouTube channel. We cover Canada, the United States, and the tropics during the tropical weather season. Please do like the video by giving it a thumbs up. The more likes we receive, the better this information can be shared with more and more people. So thank you all again for watching. I wish you a wonderful and safe rest of your Friday.